Guys, welcome to another episode of Northwest Fishing Secrets. We are at the lake with the kayak, and today we are going to do something special. I did bring a harpoon gun along, and we'll talk about why we need the harpoon gun shortly. I'm super stoked to be here. The goal is gonna be to catch any type of fish that we can out there that's legal to retain, and then we're going to cook it out there on the kayak or on shore somewhere in a nice little cove. So uh, let's go ahead and get out there and have some fun. For anyone that is new, this is my camper van. I take this puppy all over the state and fish for, uh, well, anything, really. So uh, yeah, and if you are brand new to the channel, feel free to subscribe also because I upload fishing videos like this every single week. Oh no, a little a little snail. We don't want him to drown out there. We're gonna, we're gonna save a snail, guys. A little snail over in the bushes. Whoa. What is this? Ew, it's dead, but uh, interesting. Look at the colors on this fish, guys. Can anyone uh, in the comments tell me what this is? I've never, that's a new species to me. We're gonna return it right where it was. All right, guys, we are finally on the water and Brian decided to join as well. If you guys have been subscribed for a while, uh, you'll recognize him. He's actually been uh, part of my video since the very, very beginning. We are still during the quarantine times right now, so we drove here separately. We're on separate vessels. Since we are on the water, let's uh, go ahead, take a look at what we're gonna use tackle-wise. Ooh, what do you guys think? We've got a full-size nine millimeter Luger bullet lure here. I don't know, should we use that or should we like step it down? I do have a 25 ACP bullet lure with me as well that I'm kind of curious about trying. And with us today, we have a Rona Seltzer uh, that we're going to be enjoying to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. All we have here is a very basic setup. Uh, this is a an ugly stick, GX2. It is a light action, two piece rod. Uh, just a cheap little reel. I think I've got eight pound monofilament line here. The eight pound line goes all the way down to a tiny little high quality swivel. Uh, it's a P-line swivel. I can leave the links to all the gear that I'm using in the description below. And then directly attached to this, uh, to that is the homemade bullet lure and I've shown in other videos uh, how to make these. And we're gonna cast it out far and then what we gotta do is immediately start moving with the kayak. So big old cast. There we go, and for right now, we're just gonna, you know what, we're gonna even just throw this between our legs. We gotta go, we gotta move. Cause what we don't, the, oh no, mo, my, my Rona. Uh, the reason we gotta move right away is we don't want that lure sinking to the bottom. So all we're waiting for now is the uh, pole to just slam towards us with a big old hungry, hopefully a trout or something like that on there. A trout would be amazing. Now we're just gonna do some casting too. You can do that just to, mix things up a little bit. Fish could prefer faster or slower retrieves. And I do like just, as you guys can see, jerking that pole uh, tip a little bit. Oh, oh, guys, we had a bite, we had a bite. I'm not messing around with you. We did just actually have a bite. Oh, that is, man, we're only on like the sixth cast or something. Let's try that again. That yeah. problem is when a fish bites once, especially trout. They're not stupid fish. He's probably spooked now. You catch anything yet? <laughs> well, you're going for more bassy stuff, huh? Yeah, I saw a lot of little fish jumping in the oh, spooked fish? Yeah. Dude, I'll join you on some uh, shallow water fishing. Guys, the bullet lure is really heavy, so what we're gonna do is just jig them down here too. There's a log. Oh, I can see schools of little fish. There we go, guys. We're gonna do a nice, uh, a fairly swift troll over to that little peninsula there in front of us. And this is one of my favorite areas to uh, troll for cutthroat trout. See if we can't pick anything up on the way there. Well guys, nothing on that troll. What's this? Look at that, there's a bunch of rope. Yeah, guys, we're gonna clean this rope up. It doesn't need to be out here getting stuff tangled and... There we go. So we're just gonna throw this junk in our storage here, guys. Just have a good place on your kayak where you can or on your boat where you can put away trash. 
All right, and I'm sure you guys want to know why we brought along this scary looking spear gun here. So uh, there are carp are spawning right now. So we're gonna see if we can't find a uh, carp somewhere. And if we shoot one, we're gonna do a catch and cook with them. Ooh, it is, oh, it's deeper than I thought. Just a little bit chilly. So we're gonna snorkel for a couple of reasons. One is to see if we can spearfish a carp, and the other is just to do some scouting and see what kind of fish are down there right now, just cause uh, none of us have gotten any bites yet, and we're just curious what's going on. And if you're wondering why I just spit in my mask, uh, if you're not a snorkeler, uh, it keeps your lenses from fogging up. Now let me know if you guys wanna see spearfishing videos. I actually really love spearfishing. <laughs> it is so muddy here, <laughs> totally muddy. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, I'm stuck in the mud. I can't, can't get out of the mud. There we go. Oh, there we are. So just paddling it, pushing that baby. This kayak has an outboard motor, boys and girls. I hope he's got nothing on this. I noticed that the water's significantly colder over here. Probably not a good thing. I don't know. I don't mind a little bit of chilly water. guys no carp down there but I did see a lot of yellow perch I'm getting a little cold too and we got to get some uh, a catch and cook going so hopefully we get lucky guys check out we just ran into a fan here this is Mateen we're trying to film like a catch and cook or something like that so we're um, just trying to catch anything I was hoping for a cutthroat trout but now it's down to perch or anything uh, yeah. Yeah, you, man. hey dude absolutely nice meeting you too man <laughs> good luck we are just getting killed here by this lake. It is, we totally should have had a bite by now. Didn't catch anything while trolling. Did Brian is, have been trying now with worms, but I am optimistic. Usually optimism gets you a fish in the boat. All right guys, Brian needs to leave us. He's got family obligations. Still had fun and we were distant from each other. So close yet so far, Brian. Air hug. <laughs> so he's gonna troll back to the boat launch. Hopefully he'll get lucky out there somewhere. So we are on the other side of this little peninsula. There's a, a creek that comes out right here. And whenever a creek flows into a lake, that's a really good spot to try and fish and catch anything from little panfish, like you know your sunfish, but also perch and bass and trout even like to hang out right at those outflows. So we're gonna fish that outflow Whoa, what was that? A big fish just jumped behind us there. I'm gonna like cast right into that. I'm not sure what that was, guys. That was a massive fish. Oh, did you guys just see that? Did you just see that? Right in front of me, I told you there was a big fish. There is something giant right there. Jeez. Oh, 
Oh! Kathleen's on a fish there. <laughs> no way, what did you just get? Oh, jeez! Like... I saw you fighting that thing. Oh, he, oh keep him low, keep I him know, low. I know, I know. <laughs> you want dinner? Let's <laughs> give <We have> dinner. <laughs> what did you just get? Oh! Oh. We need to measure it and see if that's legal to keep. Uh, yeah, he's, he's wet. It's okay. That's a big cutthroat. They have to be under 20 inches to keep. That's a huge, huge trout. All right, 20 inches is right here. Does it fit in the 20 inch slot? That's a keeper. That is a keeper cutthroat monster, 18 inch cutthroat. So we just wanna make sure that we get this fish out of its misery and wanna minimize the chance of losing it. That is a beautiful, beautiful cutthroat trout. You can tell by that red marking right there. There we go, he's out. Wow, good job. Let's uh, I geez. feel so proud. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys, that's the smile that you should have. You should feel so proud when you land a fish like that. Check out that little pattern right there. That pattern, Castmaster. Uh, so it's made by Acme Castmaster. I'll throw the link below. That is probably one of the best lures, period. There, there's probably an evening bite. We could just be trolling Castmasters right now. Check it out, there's little fish exploding at the surface. It's a freaking. Look at that, there's just so much surface action. Oh, there's a lightning storm or a thunderstorm. Look at that, there's rainbows up there right now and I hear a distant uh, thunder. All right, we're gonna troll back now, but this is when the bite can sometimes get really good is when conditions change like this. Oh, I love this kind of stuff. Guys, we might have a beaver here. Or an otter or something. Oh, more lightning. Oh, there it is. Look at him. That was a big beaver. <laughs> that beaver's like, who are those two creeps on the kayaks following me? <laughs> you know what? There was actually some trash back there I wanted to clean up. Look at this crap, guys. We'll, we'll pack it out. Let me get this out of here. There you go, it doesn't belong in the water. And that's the handle. There we go. Look at this, there's a big old toad or something laying there. We're gonna try and clean it up too. It's totally muddy here. <laughs> oh man, look at this. Ah, big nasty plastic tote. Probably just fell off of someone's dock or whatever and floated down onto shore here. Yeah, right there is good. That way we can make sure it doesn't fall off again. Now let's get out here, troll our way back to the boat launch. We got a fish, guys. Fish on, baby. No way. That's a fish. <laughs> fish on, baby. Oh, show yourself. What are you? It's kind of fighting like a squawfish, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not feeling a whole lot down there right now at all. Unless it's just kind of coming towards us. What do we got here? 
What do we got? On the bullet lure, baby. Come on. It's kind of fighting like a squaw. Oh, 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 oh. No, not a squaw fish. No, it's a trout. It's a trout. Oh, oh, terrible net job. Oh, that fish didn't even know he was hooked. It was swimming kind of towards us the whole time. That's another good trout, guys. He's under the boat. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, God, I'm in that this time. Oh, I can't even talk right. <laughs> Oh, wow, that trout did not fight until he got right to the boat. Right there, he's like, whoa, we, we're hooked, boys and girls. What a day. <laughs> oh, check it out. On the bullet lure, baby. That's a little 25 ACP, actually. So it's a little tiny. Oh, oh, oh he's. We got to keep him down. He's going to flop out of the boat. <laughs> All right, he's out. Look at that. Nice cutthroat trout, guys. Very nice fish. Oh, man. Oh, that is just so sweet. High five. <laughs> we're gonna gut these trout really fast. There is a second thunderstorm coming in, so we're gonna try and gut them and get the heck out of here before that uh, weather hits us. Just start right at the butthole back there. I like to get the tip of the knife under their uh, belly meat there and then pull up a little bit. The goal is you don't want to cut into the guts and it has a very full belly. So we're going to check out real fast. Actually, geez, guys, look at this. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Take a guess at what they're uh, gorging on here. Little baby salmon. Let's see what else is in this stomach. Oh yeah, more, lot, lot of juvenile salmon. Look at that. So we can tell here, this is a hatchery fish. So this is not actually a wild salmon. That's a hatchery salmon coming from the uh, hatchery that's just up uh, stream here in the creek. And we're gonna take those guts and actually take them down to the water. I don't wanna just leave them in the parking lot here. And come in here and check this out, guys. Check this out. That dark line there, a lot of people call this the bloodline, but this is actually the fish's kidneys. Cut all the way back there. And then just take your thumb and push that kidney out. See that? Kidney just comes right out. There we go, guys. And that is one cleaned out trophy cutthroat trout. And look at how pink that meat is. nasty out here we got to get the heck out of here and cook that fish somewhere else because it's really gross i don't want to get hit by lightning all right guys we are in my kitchen now because it is nasty and stormy outside i had to dry off and throw some stylish sweats on as well as this sweet northwest fishing secrets bullet lure tea because well that's what we caught the fish with just cut all the way down to the spine right here. Just slide that knife all the way down. Boom, look at that. Guys, I'm super lucky. I have morel mushrooms growing in my backyard. So we're gonna chop this baby up. Yeah, there's a tiny little slug hanging in my morel. So we're gonna evict him real quick and be right back. Now for seasoning, we're gonna use fresh rosemary from my garden and some peppercorns. 
and of course some Danish sea salt. Don't need to be shy with that stuff. There's our fresh seasonings. For that massive filet, I pulled out a matching giant cast iron skillet that we are going to grill this puppy in. Throw all those morels in. And here she goes. We're going uh, skin side down first. Oh geez, look at that guys, it doesn't even fit. All right, and here's our homemade salt, pepper, and rosemary seasoning. Then just a little bit of this QP mayonnaise. This is some good stuff, boys and girls. Alright, to remove this little thing. We're just gonna cut his tail off. Try the tail just like that with some skin. Wow. So juicy. Look at that. Now we can wrap this like so. Ooh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, what they call a masterpiece. Look at that. All right, now I'm curious to see how this trout tastes compared to Steelhead, where we did a very similar wrap in the last episode. Oop, and we got juices dripping on the floor and my poodle's getting into it. By the way, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more catch and cooks. A lot of you have been asking me to do more catch and cooks. I love making them. And if you guys aren't subscribed already to my channel, feel free to do it. I upload videos like this every single week and that way you guys do not miss my new uploads. Man, we're just going to try the biggest bite possible. This is so rewarding after a long day like that. The morel flavor actually like kicks you in the face right away. Really good flavor on those morels. If you guys have never tried a morel before, it's a very earthy tasting mushroom. Uh, the avocado is right there as well. And that trout, super pleasant flavor on the trout. Does not taste, I've had it sometimes when a big trout tastes almost a little salmon-y. This one here just tastes like a delicious trout. <laughs> <laughs> all right see you guys next week for the next fishing adventure and until then you all know it fish on baby